Should I be All right, we are recording. All right, hello, everybody. Um, now I'm uh, joined by Fatima Haidari, who is um, a Hazara living in Canada. And Fatima, do you, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Fatima Haidari. And as Abdullah said, I'm Hazara. I, didn't, I identify as Hazara. And I have been in Canada since 2015. In fact, I came by myself like when I was only 17. And um, like, yeah, and it has been the case since then because my family are still in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm, I'm currently studying uh, criminology and women studies at ACFU. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, I guess I'm passionate about like activism, issues that concern Hazara and refugees. Yeah. I think awesome. that's me. Uh, yeah. It must have been difficult. I, I always say that it's uh, even though the refugee or uh, the immigration journey is not easy. I'm really lucky to have been with my family uh, the whole time. I can imagine just being here alone. Um, but thank you so much for introducing yourself. And it's yeah, a tradition um, for uh, us and me to ask uh, like two or three silly questions and informal questions before we get into the main topic. Um, so I'm just going to do the same with you. Um, uh, I want to ask, uh, what's your favorite food? I think any food that has hot uh, hot sauce, I guess that can't <laughs> fall under my favorite food because it's spice. Okay. But if I choose one, I guess I would go with biryani. Nice. Yeah, I like, I like biryani too. Um, Okay, uh, what's the best piece of advice someone has ever given to you? Uh, to be honest, I'm not a big fan of advice, especially if I'm not asking for it. <laughs> uh, but the best one is that like do what you want because at the end of the day, people are still like no matter how good you're doing, they're like still people find a way to say that, okay, you could have done it this way or- Negative things to say. Yeah, or they find flaws. So um, sometimes you're like, okay, just do as like as if you like to do, you know? Yeah, Without yeah, yeah. That's, that's people really true. Think because they're gonna think at the end something. So yeah, yeah I guess that's, that's true. All right. Um, last question: If you won fifty million dollars, what would you do with it? I was just thinking, which bank should I put the money first until I was <laughs> <laughs> planning what to do with it? Uh, I guess because I said refugee, it's have been such a, like, I have been impacted by it. Like I have personal experience and I have friends who have been impacted by it. So I guess I would take it probably all of them, like to sponsorship. I hope by that time. Uh, all of it? I would, I would say so, yeah, because. Uh, you wouldn't take anything for your, I don't know, education, buying a house first? I mean, I don't know. I feel like sometimes, uh, because being away from family, I have access to education. I'm like, I have a place to stay. Okay. Like, because they are not in a safe situation, you still like concerned about them more than, you know? Mm -hmm. So I guess, yeah. Oh, that's very selfish. And I hope by the time I want that million dollars, like 50 million, <laughs> like the sponsorship will be in place, hopefully in Canada. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hopefully. All right, well, Fatima, um, Let's talk a little bit about you and your activities. Um, I know I know about your advocacy and you've been like, um, you post a lot about refugee issues, Hazara issues, women issues, and uh, also like so many other things that are happening in Canada. But um, uh, tell us a little bit more about your activism. What what have you been doing? What, what are some of the causes that you're involved with? Uh, I, I mean, uh... I wouldn't, I don't, I don't know if I would call myself activist, but like there are things, yeah. certain issues that I'm passionate, like women, women issues, one of them. And also yeah. it's because I'm studying that. Mm -hmm. And then like refugees, as you said, indigenous issues. Yes. Yeah. Because you are living on the land that like people have been forcefully exactly. removed, you know, and they're also impacted by it. So, and also I feel like because of the, like not to, um, compare my experience with indigenous experience. I know it's not gonna level up, but yeah. I think there's certain commonalities because being Hazara, like I spent like 12 years in school, but I didn't study anything about Hazara history. Mm -hmm. And then there were times that like, I was told by a teacher that, okay, I should feel lucky that I'm like in class right now as Hazara because mm -hmm. that opportunity, opportunity was not like 
open for Hazara people before, or there were times like going in a like not Hazara dominated area, people would make fun of my face, nose, yeah, like yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So those things. And so that's why I'm like, okay, it is time to break that silence. There are people, I know there's like backlashes, people think yeah. that, okay, it's not, it's not in favor of like unity, but in my opinion, like unity should not cause an ethnicity, you know, to suffer or like, it's That's like beautiful. unity should like, I think for being united, you should be in that state to acknowledge what has happened or what is happening to Hazara people or like in any other ethnicity, you know? Yeah. And and speaking of like Hazara suffering and what, what's, what's been happening to them, do you want to shed a little more light about what's been happening to them? Who are Hazaras? Uh, what is the situation in Indonesia? Uh, sorry, Afghanistan. Yeah, basically they have been like, uh, there has been a genocide for like almost 100, over 100 a year, or mm -hmm. over 100 years. Mm -hmm. And like starting from Abdurrahman, which when was like killed Hazara, over 60% of Hazara yeah. people. And sometimes people say they're a historic moment, but the thing is it's still happening. Yeah. Like only like since 2015, it has been like 40 targeted attacks. Mm -hmm. And like different places like gyms, mosque, education centers. Yep like wedding halls like just recently on may 8 they attacked a girls school which killed over 85 girls yeah. who were like under age of 18 and one of them is still missing and then mm -hmm. over 100 were like injured so basically we are targeted because of being hazara the way we mm -hmm. look and like the other is and there's so many incidents to be honest there was another attack like a few days ago i think june 12 they were like they placed magnetic bombs uh, mm -hmm. in civilian vehicles and killed yeah. like nine people. And there were two of them, like Fatima and Taiba. They were working like uh, in Afghan field. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's very are... unfortunate. And, and, and like you mentioned, it's all been happening in Hazara populated areas, specifically targeting Hazaras. But even if they, if we were dispersed and living in different areas, we couldn't hide because of our facial features, right? Uh, like in a country like Afghanistan, it's very easy to, to be marked and um, uh, distinguished from other people. Um, but uh, uh, apart from your um, like social media presence, I also came to know about uh, like a demonstration that you guys um, organized in front of uh, Vancouver Art Gallery. Um, tell us a little bit about that. How did that ha happen? How did you like think of organizing it with your friends? Um, um, how did it I go? What, what was the response? I think it was the turnout was pretty good, although it was a rainy weather and like kind of not so many Thank people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the people who came, they were like, you know, they stood, stood by us. So I guess initially the protest started in the US in five different cities, mm -hmm. which was along with the Twitter store. Yeah, and then like. I was kind of uh, listening to them, how they organize it, what went mm -hmm. wrong, like what, like not wrong, like what worked and what could be improved. Yep. So after hearing their feedback, so then I, like there was a group of people who wanted to organize too. And then I was like, okay, I have this experience. Not that I'm an organizer, but I have little information from here there. Yeah. So, and then we decided to have a demonstration on June 13. Mm -hmm. And then along that we had like printed petition and we also had brochures that gave information about Hazara mm. and also about the incidents that happened. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we had a few people dedicated to, okay, if people are coming by, give them a little bit information about Hazara people, hand out the brochure and also get yeah. their uh, printed uh, their signature and petition basically. And we, at the end, we were able to get 132 petition, which is pretty nice. good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then we had a statement uh, like about what we want from Canadian government, international mm -hmm. communities, and Af uh, Afghanistan government. Yeah. Uh, so I guess the turnout was good. And like, I wish more people came because it's also an issue that, like, we kind of have to explain ourselves over and over. Yeah. That, yeah. Like, when we say Hazara genocide, we, we are not denying, you know, that mm -hmm. atrocities or like the war that has happening in Afghanistan. Yeah. But unfortunately, there are some people that is still like it's hard for them to name it Hazara genocide. Mm. Although that's like the name that we are being targeted, you know. Yeah. Let's say if you go to a true. highway, like mm -hmm. for other people, it's like I don't know extremist group or wh wh whoever they are. It's mm -hmm. easy for them to say like, okay, you're Hazara, 
leave the car then there are times that they have been beheaded like yeah. kidnapped killed so but i don't know it doesn't make sense but there are people that are still resistant so yeah uh, i think it's going to take a lot of uh work and uh, a lot of more raising awareness about this topic because uh, the truth sometimes is very difficult for people to accept but it, it, it will come out um sooner or later uh, but uh, are there any future plans, um, for, uh, like any follow-up events for this demonstration uh, that you might be planning? Uh, we are still, in fact, we have a meeting tonight and we were thinking of like sending out the petition, the ones we have, we are collecting more and then yeah. we're going to send it to Ottawa and potentially planning to have a meeting with MPs in mm -hmm. Vancouver. Yeah. But it kind of depends on COVID like a little bit because maybe their office are not open. So we yeah, have to coordinate yeah, yeah. that and see if there's a Zoom mm. meeting possible. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think those are, and also like sharing resources as much as we can, you know, like asking our friends, yeah. talking about them because they are good like resources about them that yeah. Center and Amplify has our voices. Yeah, yeah, that's, it's very important to follow up with more events and trying to, like once we've started, it's, it's important not to stop and keep going and do more of these. But um, yeah, but thank you so much, Fatima, for for what for everything that you're doing, and also for giving us your time to talk a little bit about the Hazaras. Uh, I keep I keep saying this in every um, video recording that ten minutes is not enough, but uh, it's, it's a start to to a discussion. But, but thank you so much for for your time again. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much for this opportunity. It was my pleasure to share my experience and Hazara experience. Yeah, thank you so much. Will have a good day. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Bye.